So they all go out to Gethsemane. And what he says is, he says unto all the disciples, okay, you guys sit here. I'm going to go over there and pray. But then he takes with him Peter and James and John. James and John are two sons of Zebedee. So these are part of like his inner circle, his closest of the disciples. And again, I mean, notice Peter's one of them. Peter's the one that he's telling, you're going to deny me. But he's, he's one of the ones that's the closest with Jesus that gets to go with him as he goes to pray and that those three are, are, are kept even closer to Christ. And we're going to see this also later, but um, just the proximity and closeness to Jesus, everybody's at a different walk spiritually with God. Some people are further away. Some people follow not quite as closely. Some people are closer. And, you know, as we look at this, the, the, the most excitement, the place you want to be is as close as you could possibly get to Jesus Christ. And we're going to see later that Peter being far off from Christ and his walk far off spiritually from the Lord, it, it actually causes him just to get into more sins and, and causes him to deny Christ. We'll see that near the end of the chapter. I'll get more in depth than that. But we see here Jesus saying, okay, at this point, he's got Peter, James, and John real close with him in his darkest hour when he's going in and, and he's facing what he needs to do. And don't lose sight of this. It says, Jesus Christ began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Yes, we believe 100% in the deity of Jesus Christ, but we cannot ignore the humanity of Jesus Christ either. It's too easy just to say, oh, well, yeah, Jesus was perfect because he was God, like, and just kind of blow it off as if it was just some, just some simple thing. It wasn't that big of a deal. Because over and over again in Scripture, you also see many references to the humanity of Jesus Christ, that he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He knows what it's like. We have a God that knows what it's like to be us, to be people, to go through the human experience, to have hunger, to have thirst, to have um, you know, pain and sorrow and joy and gladness and, and all of the things that you can experience in your flesh, in the body. God knows exactly, completely, 100% exactly what you go through. And, you know, that's comforting. It's comforting to know that no matter what you're going through individually, God can relate to you it, just from him even having the perspective of being part of his own creation, which is incredible. I mean, it's, 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 it's mind-blowing that, that God is who he is and that he was able to become a man and endure and do the things he did. And Jesus Christ literally had these emotions and was sorrowful and he was very heavy and it was something that he knew he was facing. You know, Jesus wept when Lazarus died. He, he feels things, it, it, you know, he feels pain. He knows what he has to endure. He knows what he's facing. And it's, it's a very, very, very um, heavy time, very serious time for Jesus in the garden. Look what it says in verse 38. Then say at the end of that, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. So he's just asking his friends. He's asking those closest to him, please watch with me. He needs them for strength, for support, to, to just be here with me. Look, this is, this is, I am really having a hard time with this. Can you please stay with me? He's looking to them for that strength and support. And then in verse 39, it says, and he went a little further. So, you know, the rest of the disciples are further back. Peter, James, and John are much closer. Then he kind of goes off to be just a little bit further, a little bit more kind of on his, on his own. But his friends are close at hand. It says, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Now, first of all, one of the things that we, we could learn from this is this is exactly how Jesus taught his disciples to pray in Matthew chapter 6, right? That, that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that when we pray, we ask things according to his will. This is a teaching about prayer in general, that when we pray for things and we ask for things, we ought to always consider, well, we want God's will to be done. You know, I want this, 
God, I want this in my life. I would like for this to happen. I would like to be blessed in this way. God, can you please help me with these things? Can you help me in this area? But I want your will to be done. God, I've got a really difficult time coming up ahead, and I can see it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be fun. Is there any way that, that you can help me avoid that? Nevertheless, not what I will, but thine be done. So this is a great lesson for us to learn when we're facing, maybe especially really difficult times. Think about even people in, in serious medical conditions. God, please, please allow this person to, to be kept alive. Please heal this person. Please be with them, God, but, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. It's going to be real difficult. This is, this is a hard time, but please, I want your will to be done. And there's many areas you can apply this to. Just think about especially your, your greatest needs and wants and desires that you have and that you would go to God and entreat God for. Always remember that we need to put ourselves second to the will of God, that our will comes second. And Jesus, the humble servant, Jesus, the great example, did this very thing. But not just Jesus, the example, Jesus, God in the flesh did this.